Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening to everyone. We're going to fix <coughs> these cameras real quick. All right. Today is Tuesday, February 1st of 2022 and we have a word for you this this evening um just just so you know um we have gotten some miraculous miracles over the last couple of weeks and we know that when we do that when we when god starts moving the devil starts playing he's he tries his best to do um, to tear down, to um, hinder, to stop, whatever it is that, that God is trying to accomplish. And so we know that um, scripture says that he's already defeated. He's under our feet. He um, cannot and will not win no matter what happens, no matter what it takes. That greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world yes and so we just want to um welcome each and every one of you um we've got some things uh, announcements and things that we will be saying at the end of um this this live stream telling you about our mailing address and things like that i just want to say what an amazing um just an amazing few hours you know, it's been just a little over 24 hours and I was standing in the middle of a hospital at Emory and with a church member and was just blown away with the miracles that are happening right before our eyes. You know, we are we are living in a in a in an hour, I will say. We're living in an hour where God is just I mean, showing up and showing out in mighty ways and the healings that are coming forth. I mean, when you can take a brain tumor that's the size of two big grapes. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's probably about that big around. If you can take a brain tumor and shrink it within hours and seconds, so small that they really can't hardly see it on a scan. You know, God is working miracles right before our very eyes. That is our second report um, within less than two weeks. Um, the first report was last week where cancer was gone. The doctors confirmed that it was shrinking um, in one area and in another area on another organ. It was either so small that they could not see it or it had disappeared. That is God. That is God all by himself. And not only is it just shrinking and gone, but we're talking years and years of cancer and tumors that's been stage four. Yes. That the doctors say there's nothing else we can do. Both, both of these um, individuals that are in this church, both have given a, been given a report from the doctor saying there's nothing else. There's nothing else that we can do. And you know what I say, Becky, is when the doctors say there's nothing else that they can do, that's when we should start praising Jesus. That's when we should yes. start throwing our hands up and saying, Thank you, Lord, because, see, now they have exhausted all their efforts. Now it's up to God. God will, you know, turn things around. God will put his holy anointed in that situation and heal those individuals. You know, to the world, it looks like impossible situations. To the world, it looks like, well, when the doctors say that's all they can do, um, they've done all they know to do. Um, they've tried all the medicines. They've tried all the chemo. They've tried all of... Um, the trials and clinical studies and all of these different things went to the world to hear that news is doom and gloom. It right. is the end. But to God, to God, it is, okay, let me step in. Let me show the world why I'm God. I, 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 if I just had a little bit of faith, um, that's all it takes. We talked about the mustard seed of faith. Um, it, it just takes that small of faith in order to see God move. And, you know, we had prophecies and words given 
and come through us that that God said this is only the beginning it's only he's just getting started and so last week we got a testimony of a lady in our church that was um, about the scans um, on her she had stage four cancer on her pancreas and her liver um, the pancreas uh, the the mass the doctor said was shrinking again he said that this is this is it this is there's nothing else that, <coughs> that he knows of that he can try um, and then on her liver it was so small that the the scan could not pick it up or either it had completely disappeared and then this week we got another good report um, from a, a sweet man in our church that had a brain a brain tumor right yes behind the pituitary gland and it's just miracles like this that is happening but see it's not only happening in this church it's happening all over yes. you know God said in the last days the dead will rise mm -hmm. and you know we've seen this last week there was a man on a on a ventilator for almost a month or over a month that was declared brain dead they mm -hmm. they told the family nothing else pull the plug you're basically costing us money we need the bed it's time for them to move him out but you know what by god's grace and by the faith of those that said we are not going to just let this happen we're not just going to just stand by and let nature take its course we're going to start praying we are going to have faith yes. to believe that this young man is going to be risen from the dead because he was declared brain dead and when, I don't know if you know anything about being brain dead, but when your brain's dead, the only thing keeping you alive is a machine. Mm -hmm. And we got reports Friday night that this young man's not only, not only, I, I, we spoke about this last, last Tuesday night. We were praying for this young man and, but not only this young man is doing better. This is how much better he's doing. We got reports Friday night that he is, every organ in his body is completely well. Yes. They said every organ is working exactly the way it's supposed to work. They also said that his brain function is, is working just like it's supposed to. The only thing that they can even find that's even wrong is that he's going to need a little bit of speech therapy and a little bit of therapy to walk. Now, I'm going to tell you, when they call and say that, that man's brain dead, and when they say there's nothing else that they can do, that's God raising him from the dead. That's only God. That's no medicine. That's no doctor. That's no nothing but God. That's God turning a bad situation, a bad, impossible situation, into a situation that he can turn around and use for his glory. And it's not just going to stop with these three people. It's going to... Um, filter out into the masses it's going to, even those that are watching um, now some of you may have sickness in your body um, some of you may have already been told there's nothing else we can do we've tried everything um, you know you better get your affairs in order you better get your house in order um, if, if you've heard these things I'm here to tell you God is not through with you yet. He is still a healer. He is still a deliverer. He is still um, a way maker. Um, you know, all of these different, no matter how dark the road gets, God is standing right there with you. And it doesn't matter what diagnosis you get. God, um, in, especially in the days ahead, God already told us this. He, he revealed um, this to us that he's only beginning this is just the beginning he's only getting started and you know in order for God to show healing the sick have to come forth right there's there's got to be sickness coming um, you know coming about but you know God is a healer and and he he's never stopped he said he's the same yesterday today and forever and that's what we're standing on is the word of God. Amen. You know, it's, it's a, I had a dream last night and in my dream, 
there was a lot of people around. It was I, I can't explain where we were at. All I know that there was a lot of people around. And there was a lot of people that had a lot of diseases. And there was a lot of people that had sicknesses and, and blinded eyes and couldn't walk and all this. And it was like Jesus came in and it's like the woman of blood. All she wanted to do was touch his garment. Mm -hmm. And it was like they were just trying to touch the garment because they knew if they could touch the garment of the Lord that they would be healed. Mm -hmm. And these people that couldn't walk began to walk. These people that couldn't see began to see. And these people that had diseases upon their body, just, it just kept, just kept falling off of them. And, you know, it was like God was showing me that that's about what we're fixing to enter into. You know, I, I had a, another word that God gave me last week when I was uh, studying for my sermon on Sunday. And I've got it written down. But it says, we have not seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. You know, we think that, that these miracles, and they are amazing, and we thank God for them. But we think that we have, we've really seen miracles take place, and we have. But what God's about to start doing across this land it's going to make everybody drop to their knees and start praying to God. It's, it's, go, it's going to take something to get our attention. It's going to take something that man could not create on his own. Man could not have any hand in it to get our attention. Um, you know, it's funny that you talk about um, a word. Um, God, I, I, what I believe and what I know God is speaking more and more each and every day. He is speaking to his people. You, you mentioned that, that God is speaking. It's just we're not listening. We're not paying attention. And, you know, God, if you pay attention, God is speaking in, in various ways, in various, uh, using various um, things to do it with. Um, but I will say that uh, today, you know, I was driving home and I was had my praise and worship music going. And in the middle of, and this is, you may have experienced this, right in the middle of your darkest battle, your most fiercest battle, when you can praise God and give a shout, that means something. Because you're not dwelling on what you see. You're not dwelling on what you know um, as far as what it looks like with the natural eye. What you are dwelling on is the, the spirit of the living God that rests inside of you. That will give you that nudge. That, that you know, don't, don't start thinking. Don't, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't think that. <clears throat> and then the word will just start stirring up. And I was coming home today, and I had my praise and worship music on. And there were some things I was praying over. And, you know, being, we, we have been told that Satan is targeting the people who are a threat to him. Satan is targeting the people who refuse to back down, who refuse to give up. Satan is targeting the very people who are getting right in his face with the word of God. Um, and it's the remnant. And, you know, you may be one of those people that it seems like you are being bombarded by Satan's attacks. Everywhere you turn, everywhere you look, you take one step forward and you get knocked back too. Um, it seems like that we are being tossed on every side, but we're not forsaken. And as I was coming home today, I pulled into the driveway, and Shane doesn't even know this. I pulled into the driveway, and we have a tree that's right there in our driveway that we've put a bench there. And that is where he goes to pray Sometimes I'll go up there, I'll pray. Um, it, you know, it, it is a, it's a quiet, it's a restful place. When you have to get away from the, the family members, the animals, just the hustle and bustle of the day, 
that's that's a good place to go and when I pulled in to the driveway I stopped I stopped right at that tree and I was looking down the driveway we have a long um, driveway that's just it's just looks like a dirt road and it has trees on each side and I'm looking at it and I could feel the presence of God so strong because nobody knew the 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 battle on the inside that I was feeling it was a, a battle that I knew Satan was attacking me in my mind and in my heart and he was pulling out all the stops and he was throwing darts at me but at the same time I felt it but at the same time I was praising God saying God glory to your name God I thank you you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I stopped there looking down the road and God I felt the presence of God so strong and I started I got I grabbed a pen I grabbed a, um, a notebook because I have learned that God can speak to you just like that yeah. and our physical minds we say that we'll remember it's like dreams and things like that you know anything can happen and it'll leave your memory um, so I've all, I, I've tried to always keep pen and paper in my vehicle, but God did give me a word, and as He was giving it, I was just writing it down, and I thought, God, this is this is for me, but I feel like it's more it, it's for me included, but it's more for other people too, and so I'm gonna try to read this um, without crying, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to try to read my handwriting because it's, it is, uh, um, you know, chicken scratch. But God said, I am your healer. I am your restorer. I am your deliverer. Satan desires to blow out the light which I have given to you. But nay, he cannot. He cannot hide the light. He cannot stop the word. He cannot sift the power of the word. For I have already started a new season, a new thing. Your eyes will behold incomprehensible. And that word stuck out to me. God, why did you use incomprehensible? Because that's such a large word. Why did you, you know, incomprehensible. That that goes beyond our comprehension that we can't even explain. We can't even understand. He said, your, your eyes will behold incomprehensible things. Your ears will hear of things that the enemy thought would never happen. But now I, saith God, am wiping away every tear, and I'm about to pour out the tears that I've bottled up, and they will return as joy. You will shake your head in amazement and wonder and awe, at my hand moving for there is coming miracle after miracle we're already seeing that now there's coming miracle after miracle right now miracles instant miracles the enemy is roaring and targeting my remnant remember I just said he's targeting those that are a threat to him if you feel like you are in a warfare it's because you are the remnant of God and you are standing firm on the Word of God the enemy is roaring and targeting my remnant but in this season my remnant will be protected and he will hear their roar that that gave me hope even in my dark place God, you're going to allow my roar that you have placed within me to come out and to be so loud that the enemy hears it. He said, stay on guard, be sober of the attacks of Satan, for he knows his time is short. But I am causing a swirl. That word was, and I underlined it because I'm thinking a swirl. I'm thinking a swirl of like ice cream on an ice cream cone. He said, I am causing a swirl in the spirit, a swirl in your hearts, and a swirl in this nation. You know what happens when you start swirling things around? Everything that was dormant on the bottom begins to rise. 
everything that was laid out on the bottom, it starts to come alive again. It starts moving again. There's action um, in those things that were once dormant. Those who are not guarded or grounded in me shall be carried away. But those who are rooted and grounded in me, watch what I will do. There's a rustling in the mulberry bushes as a sign of my spirit. There, these are the days of great shaking, great awakening, great outpouring, and great healing. Did my word not say that one can put a thousand to flight and two could put ten thousand to flight? Band yourselves together and make room for the harvest. I'm stirring what couldn't be stirred. I'm healing what couldn't be healed. I'm restoring what couldn't be restored. For I will get my glory and my people will shout once again in victory. My glory is rushing in. That was one thing when he said that. I stopped. My glory is rushing in. My glory is rushing in. He said, do not quench it, but embrace it. Because that's where your healing, your, your restoration, and your deliverance will be manifested, saith the Lord of hosts. Wow. You know, I said this Sunday in my sermon. When we had church services like we've been having, don't you know that the devil's right around the corner to try to come in, steal, kill, and destroy your blessings? Because see, that's what he, he tries to, the devil tries to get in everywhere he can. But when we stop and we say, not today, mm -hmm. when we stop and we put our praise and worship music on, yes. that's an exercise of our faith to our Father. See, when we start exercising that faith into our Father, He's going to give us a word. You know, we are not meant... I, I want everybody to hear me. We are not meant to be seat warmers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because I heard a pastor preaching on this today. We're not meant to be seat warmers. We're not meant to come in and say, Hello, everybody, and sit down and, you know, look at everybody's mm -hmm. dress and suit and all that. No, we've got a work to do in God's house. And this is exactly where we need to be is in God's house. Yes. Because, see, in the latter days, just like you said right here. What, what, let me, my glory is rushing in. My glory is rushing in. And then I want you to go up here and I want you to, what did you say about? Uh, do not quench. Do, yeah, read that again. My glory is rushing in. Do not quench it, but embrace it. See, a lot of times when, when we're at church and the Holy Spirit starts to show up, people say, uh-oh, uh, they back off. But you know what? I thank God for uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. Because, see, when we become comfortable in our walk with Jesus, when we become comfortable with our walk, that's when we need to sit down and we need to pray and ask God. We need to hit our knees at the altar and ask God. Because see, we He is never wanting us to be comfortable. We serve a jealous God. He wants all of us. He don't want just a little portion of us. See, a, a lot of the Bible that we pick and choose from and we read are all these nice and they're fairy tale type uh, stories that are great. But see, a lot of this Bible that preachers and pastors and evangelists and, and people don't preach from is also a lot of parts of, uh, of a jealous God. God wants all of us. Yes. And when we don't give him our all, that's what that says right there, right? Quench, yeah. Do not quench when, it. When we quench it, we're, we're walking on thin ice. We're in troubled waters. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes back to that verse to be ice cold or fire hot, never to be lukewarm. Mm -hmm. Because if we're lukewarm, he'll spew us out of his mouth. And this is a dangerous place for Christians. Because, see, Christians know better, right? Yes. And when Christians get into the house of God and Christians start, there's a transformation there. When they get saved and they start working for God and they're using their gifts and their talents and, and what God has showed them. 
this is where we have to be very careful. Because if we decide that we want to walk away from God and we don't want to have anything to do with him, he'll take that gift just like that. You know, there, you should never, ever quench the Holy Spirit. We should never quench God in the movement. The Holy Spirit in this church in the last few weeks has been off the charts. You know, we was in church the other day and somebody says, man, it was so thick in here. I thought about opening the doors and I thought, hallelujah, open those doors, open the windows. Let everybody in this community hear what's going on in here. Because Becky, just like you said, turn it over to the very, very front. You and I have not even talked about this. Um, I was in the house when you got home and you was writing this down and you was in your truck. But it says right here in the very first thing that Becky wrote down, it says, I am your healer. Yes. What's been going on in our church? He's healing. What's been going on across America? Healing. What's been going on in our dreams? Healing. <laughs> okay. Then he says, I am your restorer. restorer. You know, God is the king of restoration. Mm -hmm. You know, what is going on in people in this sanctuary and their bodies and their souls and their walk with God? What's happening to them? They're being restored. What's happening across the United States of America? Restoration. Okay, and then this one. I am your... Deliverer. Deliverer. So that I am your deliverer, that opens up so many doors. You know, we can be delivered from so many things. Mm -hmm. But as I was listening to this preacher today, this pastor of a church, and he was beginning to talk about different things and demonic spirits, and I just thought about everybody that I'm talking to, every pastor that I'm listening to, every prophet that we are in conversation with, it's all the same thing. So that's confirmation that God's moving across this land. There are so many demonic spirits trying to hit our churches today. There's so many demonic spirits trying to hit our homes today, trying to hit our children, trying to hit everything that we're a part of. There's so many demonic spirits trying to hit it. You know, we can be delivered from so many thing, things, but Becky, this one right here, I think it's just my favorite right now. I am your healer. I am your healer. Because, you know, as Becky said, I didn't know anything about this. You don't know anything about what I'm talking about. I'm fixing to tell you. But as we were in church Sunday and I was praying for different people and this man that I went to the hospital with yesterday to find out about his brain tumor. When I got home, the enemy attacked me in my physical body and I was sick. And then when I got, I took... Lexi, my, our daughter, to school this morning. When I got home, I was sick. And I've been sick all day long. And then I was in the shower, and I was, I was getting ready to come over here tonight. And I was thinking, that's what the devil is trying to do. See, the devil tries to put sickness on us. Mm -hmm. When we've been praying for somebody else, what better way to attack but in sickness? Mm -hmm. What better way to try to defeat us is through sickness. But as I was in the shower, I just, I just put my hands on my stomach and I said, Lord, I ask you right now to take this out of my body to heal me in your holy name. Amen. Yep. You know, I give it to him and I'm healed. See, when, when God says that he wants us to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength, and we are to worship him and serve him, with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. He wants all of us. He wants the strong pieces. He wants the weak pieces. He wants the broken pieces. He wants those that we're not um, altogether sure that, that we want to release to him. But he says, all. And when we serve with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, when we stand on his word with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, when we put our sickness in his hands, 
and we stand and we trust and we believe God at all costs with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. That's where he has to move. It is not God's will or purpose or plan for any person to be sick. It does say in the word, however, that we are to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He took the stripes on his back for our healing. Um, it says in, in the scriptures that I am the healer of all all we, of diseases. We serve a God of all. He wants all of us, and in turn, he's going to give us all that he has. Healing, restoration, deliverance, salvation, you know, whatever it is, he's got it. But we've got to serve him and love him and trust him and believe him with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. And that's where he can, in turn, give us his all. Becky, I like the word all. Because Jesus gave us his all. Yes. And we should, it's just like you said, we are all guilty of only giving a percentage. Mm -hmm. But God's wanting it all. And God is after it all. There's even a song, Jesus paid it all. Paid it all. Every bit of it, he paid for it. But when the devil tries to come against us, do you know what God has given us? God has given us the authority to bind that demon up, yes. to bind that devil up. You know, the devil is going to attack you in so many different forms. But it's, he has given us the authority to bind that devil up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, in church Sunday... I'm telling you, I, I told you when we got out in the car, I said, I feel, I feel different about how I preach this Sunday. I feel different about just the atmosphere, of the whole service. But God has given us the authority. I was mm -hmm. so just, I was so pumped up, if you will. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I really just, I, I didn't even want to go home. But, you know, it's something when God gives you the authority. When God gives us the authority that we can call that devil. And I had people in our church, you know, they were laughing because, like Becky said, we have, we have animals. And, you know, it, it started snowing at our house on Friday night. And we had a lot of the church people over. And so when the last were leaving, I had walked out to the the field and I was checking on the animals because it started snowing and I looked down and there was uh, we, we're going for a lack of better words we're going to call it dung <laughs> there is a lot of dung everywhere in our pastures and the only thing that I could think of was that dung reminds me of the devil because mm -hmm. that's all he really is is a big old pile of dung and he's under our feet and he's under our feet and then that's what I got to thinking about how the devil and how we have the authority over the devil to put him back in his place. And as I looked at that dung and I looked at my feet and I looked at that dung under my feet, I began to stomp it. Mm -hmm. And I began to jump up and down and just stomp it to it was just disintegrated almost. And then I got to laughing at myself because I was stepping on dung. <laughs> But I thought about that and I have thought about it ever since. Every time I look out there, I look at that and I thought, okay, that's exactly who Satan really is. Mm -hmm. He is dung under our feet. And when we realize that's exactly who Satan is and we bind him up and we put him back in a place where he belongs, there ain't a devil in hell that can harm us. See, when the Bible says whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We have somehow gotten past, the, gotten tried to get around the whole binding of Satan until he's free to roam. He comes in our homes. We he invite comes, him in. He, yeah. Um, he knocks on the door, and then we go and we answer, and then we invite him to come in, and, and he starts talking, and... We sit there and we listen to him. I did that this week knowing I know better. 
Um, but you know, Satan will come to us at our weakest point, no matter who you are. He will come to you at your weakest point because he knows when you're weak. He knows when he can attack because you're not going to be on your guard. But even on your weakest day, you still have dominion over him. You have to learn. And I have, you know, it, it's like the prodigal son that it was, he was down in the pig pen and it said he came to himself. We've got to learn to come to ourselves quicker. <laughs> uh, don't waste any time listening to Satan because as sure as he's talking, he's lying. And we know that when he's lying, he's up to no good. He's trying to prevent you from getting um, to that next level in God. He's trying to prevent you from walking in the grace and the goodness and the, the, the mercy of God and the fullness of God. But we know that as long as we don't bind him, because he's going to come to us. He's persistent. He's going to come to us and, and terrorize us until we quit breathing. Mm -hmm. But when we have a made-up mind that says, Not today, Satan. For God I live. For God I die. You have no authority in my home. You have no authority in my mind, in my body, in my relationships, in my finances. You have no authority in my country. You have no authority anywhere. And I bind you by the blood of the Lamb. And I loose the, the power of, of the Almighty. And, and, you know, when you start doing that, um, you see things start changing. Um, you know, the, the man that got healed, that got a good report in, from the doctor, uh, you know, the whole time, after he had a stroke, the whole time he was saying, thank you, Lord. You better watch out. You better watch out. You better watch out. He was speaking it and prophesying even in the middle of his sickness. But see, there was an obedience there, Becky, because see, as crazy as it sounds, Sunday morning, as I prayed for him, I have to do what God says. Mm -hmm. And God says to give them this oil and every hour on the hour put it across his forehead right there where that tumor's at yep. and pray he is healed in the mighty name of Jesus he is healed in the mighty name of Jesus I said do it all until you go to bed and then when you get up in the morning start doing it again mm -hmm. so when I got over to the house they were saying I'm healed in the mighty name of Jesus and I don't know what happened from midnight until when I got there but there was a vision from God. He was showing him how Satan was trying to take him out. But he was restoring what was in there. Mm -hmm. he, Satan was trying to come in and steal his joy. Kill him physically. But God come in and restored it. Mm -hmm. You know, isn't it amazing when... It's just like you said a while ago. When we're in the storm and we decide... To put our praise and worship on. Mm -hmm. And when we decide, when the doctor says that you've got a tumor that, that's big around on your pituitary glands. And it's got all these things out of whack. Isn't it amazing how we decide, I'm going to praise him anyway. Because see, our healings come through our praise. Mm -hmm. that, that's where our breakthrough comes from. When we say for, for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We need to be saying that on every turn, every turn we turn. For me and my church, we're going to serve the Lord. For me and my, where I go to school, we will serve the Lord. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For me and whoever gets in my vehicle, we're going to serve the Lord. For me and whoever's at my workplace, we're going to serve the Lord. For me and whoever mm -hmm. carpools with me, we're going to serve the Lord. See, it's up to us. That's what we keep trying to put out. It's up to us. To serve the Lord. God will take care of the rest. Because I'm going to tell you, this young man that, that, that has the brain, that had the brain tumor, that had the brain tumor, had, had decided, what else do I have to lose? Praise him anyhow. But praise him anyhow. <laughs> See, that's what I challenge you. If you're going through anything, all you got to do is praise him. You don't have nothing else to lose. 
You know, when we have that mindset that I'm going to praise him through any storm, I guarantee you, that storm, he will split the sea apart and give you dry land to walk on. He will make the seas calm so you can take a nap in the boat. Yep. And, you know, we don't know um, what you may be facing, what you may be dealing with. What we do know and what we can tell you is God is still a healer. God is still a restorer. He said it in his word. I am a healer. I am a restorer. And I am a deliverer. Whatever it is, and he's a savior above all else. He is a savior. And before we pray, um, and well, before we end, we want to pray. If you have a prayer request, that you don't mind sharing, put it up in the chat so that we can pray over it. If you have an unspoken prayer request, put it in the chat so we can pray with you. If you want to send us a, a prayer request, because we're all the time praying over people, we get prayer requests from all over through social media, through email, phone calls, texts, whatever it is, um, we want to pray with you. Um, if you want to email us, the email is rofministries2021 at gmail.com. If you want to write to us, maybe you, your prayer request is lengthy and maybe you have pictures of, of loved ones that you are, want us to stand in agreement with uh, for prayer, uh, for healing, for salvation, whatever it is. Um, send those to us. Um, you can send it to Remnant of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 481, Orchard Hill, Georgia, 30266. That's P.O. Box 481, Orchard Hill, Georgia, 30266. If you would like a bottle of oil or a prayer cloth, just let us know and we can give it to we can get it to you. We can mail it to you. These are free. But I encourage you, everyone listening, get some of these. Yes. I don't care how many you want. Let me know. We'll get them to you. Because there's power in both of these. They've both been anointed. Yes. You can use this for prayer. You can, you can anoint people around you. You can anoint people in your neighborhood. <laughs> but what I would tell you is there's power in this oil. These prayer cloths, you can put them in your pillow for sweet sleep. You can put them in your your spouse's pillow, you can put them in a friend's pocket, whatever they're going through. I know when family members of mine has had surgery, I put those in there along with a mustard seed of faith in their pillow while they're down in surgery. There is power in those things. You ready to pray? Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness. God, we thank you for another day of life and another opportunity to wake up and serve you like we should, like you intended with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. Lord, we ask that you first forgive us of all of our sins, all of our unrighteousness. God, anything that is unpleasing to you, God, we ask that you remove it, that you reveal it to us, God, that you help us release it, Lord, in your precious name. Lord, we pray over each and every person that is watching and may be watching um, in the future. God, we whatever the need is, you know the need. You know the heart and you see, God, and you hear what they're asking. God, I ask that for those that need a Savior, God, that you would reach down and wrap your loving arms around them. God, and, and let them know that you died on the cross. You paid um, the, yes. the, the ultimate price for, for their ransom. You paid it all just for them and that you love them. Put hooks in their jaws, Lord, for the, the family members and friends that, that we are praying over, Lord, that they will not leave this world without yes. knowing you. Lord, for those that, that are sick in their bodies, Lord, you bore the stripes on your back so that we would be healed. Lord, you said in your word that you were the healer of all thy diseases, yes. all of them. Any that were in the past, any that are in the, the present, and any of those that are in the future, you are the, the healer of all thy diseases. And by your stripes, we yes. are healed. Amen. 
Lord, we claim healing for these people. We claim restoration and yes. deliverance, God. Lord, raise up an army. Lord, those that have um, depression, that are suffering from depression or anxiety, Lord, we cover it by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, that it would collide with your power and that it would be sent running and it would never return. Lord, give joy where there has been pain. Lord, give peace where there's been chaos and a struggle. And Lord, just show us, Lord, what all you want us to do. Lord, deal with each and every person, even those that have their own ministries, God. I ask that you get into their ministries, that you open doors for them, that you bless the works of their hands and guide their footsteps. Lord, I ask that you keep your protecting angels around each and every person. Lord, wake us up in the middle of the night, Lord, and give us dreams and visions of things that we've never seen and, and things that we've never heard, God. And Lord, let us stand on your word at all costs when satan comes in like a flood lord your word says that you would raise up a standard against it god help us to stand firm on your word and lord let let you find us faithful let when you're looking over the earth lord let us let us be found faithful, wanting nothing. But, Lord, let us be steadfast in your word, unmovable, unshakable, always abounding in the faith of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you're looking for a church to call home, if you're looking for a church that's growing in the ministry, that believes in healing, laying hands on people, the prophetic word, we are at 1370 North McDonough Road in Griffin, Georgia. That's zip code 30223. And our phone number is? 770-828-5888. Again, that's Abiding Love Community Church. Um, we have service every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We have Bible study every Wednesday night, very casual, um, at 630. In fact, we are eating um, this Wednesday, um, so if you're looking for a place that that preaches the truth and that allows God to have His way in His own house, we invite you here at Abiding Love Community Church in Griffin, Georgia. And we are going to have revivals this year. Yes. And we, I, I'll leave you with this: we had the big white tent sitting out in our front yard. Mm -hmm. And the devil thought he was going to steal that. And there was a, a windstorm that came through and just kind of tore that thing to shreds. But, you know, this is the way I look at it. I called the insurance company and said, absolutely, it's covered. This is what I'm going on faith. God allowed that one to be gone so that we got a bigger tent. Made way for the bigger. Because, see, we got to have more room. That's right. Tent wasn't big enough. We've got to have more room to put more people under that tent. And listen, I told them this the other night. I said, we're going to have to have a tent to have church under while our new sanctuary is being built. Because <laughs> we're going to outgrow our sanctuary right. very soon. We're going to go out and up. Out and up. So we're looking for land on, on the side of us over here. And we're looking for God's blessings just to just overwhelm this community, this church. And everyone that's a part of it, and you that is online as well. We love you, and we'll see you next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. God bless you. God bless you.